Welcome back everyone to example three of our falling body problems that you typically see in a physics classroom. This time the question reads, a coconut is dropped from a height of 60 meters. One second later, a second coconut is thrown down with an initial velocity. Both coconuts reach the ground at the same time. What was the initial velocity of the second coconut? Let's begin with an illustration. So originally we have a coconut, so this is coconut one, that is thrown from a height of 60 meters down. Then one second later, we have a second coconut that is thrown with an initial velocity at the height of 60 meters, and it reaches the ground the same time that coconut one was thrown a second before. From this question, we can tell that coconut one has an initial velocity of zero because the question makes it known that the second coconut is thrown down with an initial velocity. So we assume that this one is zero. Let's write down everything we know. So for coconut two, it starts at 60, and we'll represent that with x sub zero. It ends at zero. We don't know its initial velocity. We don't know its final velocity. We do know that there is an acceleration due to gravity. I'll represent that as A is equal to negative 9.8 meters per second squared. The reason why I chose negative is because I'm taking into account the direction of this coconut going downwards. And the time that it takes for coconut one and coconut two to reach the ground is unknown, but they are the same. Let's write down the information for coconut one. Again, it's pretty much the same, 60, the final is zero. The final velocity is unknown. The acceleration is the same as negative 9.8, and the time we don't know. The way I'll solve this is first find out how far coconut one has reached after one second. So I need to find out x initial, so I'll be using this formula. X is what we're looking for, so I'll leave that the way it is. We know that the initial height was 60 is equal to the velocity, initial velocity happens to be zero times after one second. That's what we're looking for, the final distance after one second. Anyway, multiplying these two give you zero, so we can forget about that moving forward. Plus 0 0.5 times the acceleration due to gravity, negative 9.8 times one raised to the power of two. Let's solve for x, that's not hard to do, we'll take that over. We have x is equal to all of these multiplied. Let's use our calculator. 0 0.5 times negative 9.8 times 1 raised to the power of 2. And if we bring the 60 over, it becomes positive 60. So we end up with 55.1. After one second, the coconut is now 55.1 meters from the bottom. 55.1. Another thing that I can find using the information that I have is the velocity after one second for coconut one. And I can use this formula to help me do that. So the final velocity after one second is the initial velocity, which was zero, plus negative 9.8, the acceleration due to gravity, times one. This equals two, simplifying that, negative 9.8 meters squared. The fact that velocity is negative means that it's going down. So don't get any ideas, that just gives you the direction in which this velocity is moving in. All right, so we can now replace this with 55.1 meters and replace the initial velocity, which we wrote down as zero, with negative 9.8. So these are the numbers relative to one second, which is the time that coconut two was dropped. Using this information, we can actually find out the time for coconut one. And if we find the time for coconut one, it's the same time as coconut two, the same time that they reach the ground. So we can use that information to help us with coconut two. So I have the final value in which that coconut reaches, which is zero from the top. The initial was 55.1 is equal to the initial speed, which is negative 9.8 T plus 
0.5 times the acceleration due to gravity, negative 9.8 t squared. Now this looks like a quadratic, so expect to use the quadratic formula to find the time. I'll take this value over. I get negative 4.9 t squared, that's this part simplified, minus 9.8 t plus 55.1. At this point, you should be using the quadratic formula, but if you have this feature on your calculator, you can do it on your calculator. Negative 4.9, negative 9.8, 55.1. So we'll get two t values. The first one is 2.49, 2.49, that's the time it takes coconut one to reach the ground, therefore coconut two. And the other t value happens to be negative. So we can't use this will only be using 2.49. And if you want to take into account significant figures, at this point you would have rounded this to 2.5, but let's just keep 2.49. Now, if we have t as 2.49 for coconut one, we're looking for this. That's our goal. So what formula takes that into account? We can use this one. So we have the final represented as x being 0 minus 60 is equal to what we're looking for. The time is 2.49 plus 0 0.5, negative 9.8. Again, the time is 2.49. Raise that to the power of 2. And all we have to do is solve for that variable. So I'll take negative 60, that's the left side, and bring all of that over. So minus that big expression. We'll simplify that using our calculator in a moment. And then we divide both sides by 2.49. Okay, so let's use our calculator. We have negative 60 minus bracket 0 0.5, bracket negative 9.8, bracket 2.49, raised to the power of 2. That's the top part of the fraction. Divide now by 2.49, and we get initial velocity of negative 11.89, or simply 11.9 meters per second down. So that second coconut was thrown at a speed of 11.9 meters squared, whereas the first coconut was thrown with no initial speed, and this is what led to them touching the ground at the same time. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comment section below or use our website shown on your screen. Thank you for watching.